Ladies and gentlemen, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope y'all are doing well. If it's daytime on your end, hope you're having a good day. If it's nighttime, of course, you know, you have to have a good night. If you're tuning in to hashtag LNT episode sank, that's five in French if you all didn't know. Uh, but with your favorite man and favorite host, Ahmed Ali. Now, before we jump into what's trending today and what the topic is today, and trust me, the topic tonight, guys are thirsty for it. Girls are also looking forward for it. And trust me when I say this will get you and change your future. But let's go jump in what's trending today and we'll be back very short. So mashallah, uh, when we look at uh, Europe and what's going on in the beast from the east, uh, everybody's scared about it. Muslim mosques uh, have opened their door in the UK and Ireland uh, for the homeless. Uh, who have become uh, or have been in a situation of homelessness uh, due to the beast from the east. Uh, we do thank our brothers uh, for opening up their uh, doors for the homeless. Uh, of course, it's a humanitarian thing, uh, not only Islamic, but also humanity needs us. So we do thank them uh, very much. Now, the second thing that's trending in the world right now, um, and for the people that are migrating uh, illegally, they can go and do this. Now, uh, apparently, you can now buy... Uh, a Cyprus, uh, a Cyprus uh, passport. Now, investors who have almost five million pounds or five million uh, euros can buy a passport uh, and just go around the uh, EU freely. No, no, no need for visa. Now, this guy, he's a Russian investor um, who bought a passport, a Cypriot passport, uh, and he's traveling freely. Uh, around EU without any problem. Uh, now, a person who has uh, 5 mil uh, or 12.5 mil, you know, <laughs> you can really go live a life of a king. But anyways, this guy wants a passport to go travel uh, in the EU, uh, European Union, if you know what EU is. But yeah, we'll go and uh, we'll jump into what's topic of tonight is. So let's go do that. Now, we can't thank Allah enough for this blessing that He has bestowed upon us. Uh, now, this blessing, uh, depending on who you are, uh, if you're a guy, you'll uh, know in, in, uh, when, when you reach puberty. If you're a girl, I don't know what you get. But anyways, this dream, every person in the world dreams about and wishes to happen. Now, as many uh, who follow us on Instagram and Facebook, we did... Uh, put out the poster with the question, many would actually get to know up to now what the topic is. And the topic is marriage. The unity of the husband and the wife together, in a halal way, of course. We don't want any random babies running around the streets not knowing who their dad is. But um, getting married is one of the things uh, that everyone should look forward to. Not only is finding a spouse uh, a worldly achievement, but also completes one's personality and, of course, reduces one's level of lust uh, now, sometimes, sometimes it does, but unless you, you know, you have too much testosterone or uh, you've eaten a box of donuts like from Dunkin' Donuts or from Timmy's or Starbucks or, you know, those donuts. But those donuts, oh my days. Like, I remember those days. Holy, oh. But yeah, the donuts. Oh, hold on. Are those donuts? Are those? <laughs> yeah, subhanAllah. You know, when, when a believer prays to Allah, subhanAllah, or, or has an intention uh, to pray to Allah, you know, of, uh, of donuts, you'll get them right away. These were delivered uh, especially to hashtag LNT uh, with the cameraman. But, mmm. Mmm. Oh, wow. That, that's actually good. That's actually good. But wow. I mean, nowadays, whenever the, marriage, the topic of marriage is brought up, a few things are questioned immediately. And I'm sure if you were to ask anyone, whether a lady or a guy, why aren't you married yet? What qualities are you looking for? 
the number one thing automatically, automatically, and uh, if you were to ask me, I mean, I would uh, have to answer in a certain way, but we can't answer that on TV. Uh, but if you were to ask any guy or any girl, for the girl, she's going to say, oh my God, I need a tall, handsome man uh, with good qualities. Um, for a guy, he would ask for a beautiful woman. And uh, honestly, in both ways, people are making it more complicated to get married or to find the proper spouse because, you know, you have that long checklist of the things you wish your future husband or wife has to have. Unfortunately, uh, the other thing happens when your parents get involved, when, uh, you know, your, 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 your family uh, or your friends get involved, oh, I don't like this guy, this guy has attitude or whatever, or this guy doesn't have a nice car, or, or when, you know, when you're choosing a spouse, uh, you get to tend on, uh, tend to look at the wealth instead of the knowledge, tend to look at the beauty, uh, and of course, I mean, you have to get married to someone beautiful, you know, uh, but everyone's beautiful in, in, in the eyes of uh, the person they love. Trust me when I say that. Everyone is beautiful. I'm just saying that because I'm me. But everyone is beautiful in the eyes of the one they love. Now tonight, we have a very interesting question. We're giving you the opportunity to tell us what qualities to look for in a spouse. What are the qualities, in your opinion, if you were to imagine right now, what qualities to look for in a spouse? Do you look for tallness? Do you look for um, you know someone that's uh, smart, someone that gives good hugs, someone that good, gives good cuddles? That just goes back to you uh, and, and and your checklist. Once I th th this is true. Once uh, I met someone. Enough with the question. Let's, let's come back to me. Uh, but yeah, uh, once I actually th this actually true happened in, in university. Uh, we were sitting in in, in, in a class, uh, social sciences class. Uh, psychology and um, one of the questions I would ask um, do you have a checklist for the person you love or for, for the person you want to love and I'm not even kidding this chick this girl not chick this girl in my class uh, has a list ready on her phone and she has almost 25 things to check off to find out if the person she wants is on that list or the qualities of the person is on that list. Now, let us know what you guys think about today's topic. I think we have uh, a few calls coming in. So you can call uh, via the number shown below on the screen, uh, or you can go on our Facebook channel at Imam Hussein 3 tv and comment to let us know what you think. Send us a message, send us a voice note, the number is right there, plus 964. 774-076-1836 That's plus 964-774-067-1836 uh, To let us know what you think or go uh, to Facebook and Instagram at Imam Hussein at LNT.show And let us know what you think um, Now I believe we do have uh, a caller coming in uh, But uh, we'll wait until we get that uh, and of course, uh, let's hope what that person, or let's see what that, let's hope, let's see what that person has to say about today's topic uh, to let us know uh, what they think about the person or the qualities of the person they're looking for has to have. Um, so let's check. Uh, now, to, to, to kick it off with, I mean, um, since uh, we have Al Abbas السلام, behind us, uh, we got to kick it off with. Uh, with a question or with a Quranic verse, not a question, a Quranic verse. Now, if we were to go to look at the Quran, uh, Surah al Nur, uh, Rome, verse 21, uh, Allah the Almighty says, and of His signs uh, is that He has created from you uh, or from yourselves mates that you may find tranquility in them, and He placed between you affection and mercy. But we do have a call from Ali uh, from London. Salamun alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ali from London. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Welcome to the show. Now today's question is: um, what and qualities? I just want like to say on the topic, one thing that's quite okay. underrated in uh, something that I think most Muslims should look for when they're looking for a spouse is uh, 
mainly looking at the spouse or the potential spouse's parents and how the parents has raised the daughter or the son because that will really indicate how they're going to raise your children and that's something I feel is the most important. Mm -hmm. Now, so the call got disconnected. Thank you very much, Ali, from London. Um, but the, the, the idea that I got from, from uh, uh, this brother's um, uh, opinion is that it, it all depends on the way you raise your children. Um, of course, in today's world, um, raising a child is a lot harder than before. Um, so the girls and guys uh, tend to always, or sometimes you can't say always, uh, get to sem sometimes deviate from the path of their parents or deviate from um, whatever they have. Uh, I look pretty fresh today. But yeah, uh, so tonight is the question. Uh, we just got a voice note from uh, Ahmed from Lebanon. What is he saying? From Lebanon, uh, my view towards today's topic about the selection of a spies is this. Uh, one must be at faith and beauty respectively. These two qualities really matter for youth from all communities, I think. And that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, so faith and beauty. Faith and beauty. Uh, Ahmed from Lebanon uh, says faith and beauty are two important things. And honestly, those two things together uh, are great. Uh, that is your opinion. Hopefully, uh, if you're married, that's good. If you're not, then let's hope uh, you have the faith and the beauty uh, coming towards you. Uh, now, when a, a lot of people do ask the question, if I don't find the person I'm looking for, and sometimes they make the excuse up, well, there's a guy that's wanting them, but they're refusing uh, and all that. Now, when we do find someone, do they have to have the exact same qualities on our checklist? Now. Is that necessary or is that not? We'll find out right after this voice note that we just received. F Muhammad from Canada. Muhammad from Canada. What is he saying? Assalamu alaikum. I'm Muhammad from Canada. I think one should look for family background when it comes uh, to marriage because uh, most likely when the family is known for piety or good manners, then daughter or sons will uh, inherit their qualities thank you thank you very much uh, Muhammad from uh, from Canada those donuts actually taste amazing but going back this person also says it depends on how you raise your children uh, and how uh, your parents are in raising you or in raising the person you are trying um, to look for now there are a, a few factors that we should pay attention to uh, in selecting our spouse. Now, the first factor, many will not agree. You know, uh, due to the, 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 the things that are happening around the world today, um, religious, religious, religiousness, that was tough. Religiousness is something that sometimes people won't agree to because a lot of people say, I could marry someone that's not religious. I'm religious. I could marry someone that's not religious and then I can, you know, uh, talk them into it and stuff. Of course, if you have that influence, you can. But sometimes things don't always go the way you want to go, uh, that you want them to go. Um, but we are receiving a few phone calls. Uh, but okay, so we, we're, we're getting a few messages uh, coming in uh, on our WhatsApp number shown right below uh, just now. Uh, if you have anything to tell us, um, go ahead. Now we do have a message from from Ismail from Egypt. So this is personally, I look at beauty and personality. I know that uh, I know that might not be right, but this is just me. I believe that if you are going to live with a person forever, she should she has to be beautiful and nice. I agree with you 100%. You know I can't give my opinion yet, but um, the person. Uh, has to look beautiful at the same time at the same time they have to have uh, a certain quality as well I'm waiting for you to tell me what quality what that quality is now we do have another message um, Jasmine from Australia Alhamdulillah when my husband came to my father and asked for my hand I made sure 
He possessed two qualities, strong faith and personality. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Jasmine from Australia, thank you very much. And you know, honestly, one of the great things that people look forward to should be uh, the two things that uh, Jasmine mentioned. Uh, a strong personality, strong faith and personality. And honestly, you can ask anyone uh, before marriage and after marriage, their personality grew a lot. Um, they had um, things uh, or they did things before their marriage that after the marriage sometimes they think, oh wow, I'm more restricted now, I have a curfew uh, and all of that. But honestly, trust me when, uh, when I say a lot of people feel tranquility when they've, um, when they've gotten married. Uh, they feel like their personality has grown, um, their personality has reached a level. Oh, those donuts, uh, they're kicking in right now. Uh, but... Uh, Sorry? Uh, yeah, we are getting a few messages coming in uh, from Ammar Rizvi from Denmark. Uh, there are two kinds of standards that should be taken into consideration when selecting a spouse, personality, and lineage. Okay, now we, we had a few personalities, but this one is saying lineage. Um, so it all goes back to the family um, or, or uh, the ancestors of a person. Uh, now, one of the things that um, are important, uh, just referring back to a hadith, um, is uh, lineage. Now, in Imam Ali ibn Talib salam, this is very quick. Uh, when Imam Ali went to Aqil and he told him um, that he wants a wife, he gave a few qualities. He said, I want a person or a wife uh, that the most valiant warriors are her ancestors. The valiant warriors, a person, uh, people of faith, uh, of bravery, of courage, uh, and of course, they need to ha they need to be valiant. Um, so Aqil said, "Give me a month, and I'll you know get back to you." A month after, Aqil found Umm al -Banin. So we do find that uh, Imam Ali Talib alayhi salam uh, didn't always focus on beauty. He focused on characteristics and qualities. Um, just like how we should focus on characteristics and qualities as well. Now, uh, another thing, I keep on looking at the notes, another thing uh, that's also important when uh, selecting a spouse um, is looking at the fact, you know, everyone says, a lot of people disagree with this, and I get this. I sometimes disagree with it as well. Uh, beauty it vanishes and religiousness continues. Um, that's a tag you were watch right there. Uh, it's not up for sale though, it's not up for sale. Uh, but a lot of people, they say that beauty vanishes um, and uh, the religiousness stays uh, a long way. And 100% uh, I agree with that. At the same time, a lot of people disagree and they say that, you know what, in the morning, and I've, I've personally heard this, in the morning I need to wake up to someone beautiful. That person I'm waking up to needs to be beautiful. And one of the most important things is waking up to someone that's beautiful and religious at the same time. That's important as well. You know, I had to make that statement go right now. Uh, but other qualities um, that we have a call from Fahima from London. Salamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Hello, yes. Uh, welcome to the show tonight. And uh, tonight's question is. What qualities to look for in a spouse? In your opinion, what do you think? Um, I think a lot of the um, audience have mentioned uh, one or two specific things. Mm -hmm. But I think generally, a lot of the times, we consider what other people might view looking, a spice, or looking for a spouse might mm -hmm. be. But we actually need to know ourselves first. We need to know what exactly we value, what of our beliefs and values and qualities are, mm -hmm. and how the other person can match that. Okay. So we're looking at, oh, you know, how the families should be, you know, respectful and religious and all of these sort of things. But there are a lot of circumstances where even families that are not religious and not very much brought up their kids in the right way, but they still turn out okay. So it's very much a narrow viewpoint. Mm -hmm. So we got to look at it from an individual's point of view as to how do we know ourselves really well? Mm -hmm. What are we looking for? What do we think as relationships mean? 
for us and what do we want out of a relationship mm -hmm. and that's what's going to get you you know the spouse that you require according to your own individual needs according to your own beliefs and values so you've got to know yourself very well and you need to sort of go and you know seek someone that will match that mm -hmm. okay that th th those are a few, a few good points that you mentioned um you mentioned there uh but thank you very much uh, for letting us know your opinion uh for tonight's topic um one uh, another thing that a lot of people also um that uh Fahima mentioned from London uh, is we always tend to be influenced by the people around us. Um, we get to uh, basically get to be influenced by the people around us. You know, the, the person next to me or my friend or, you know, whoever my cousin wants to marry uh, someone beautiful. Um, they, I have to have the same view. Uh, I got to marry someone beautiful, more beautiful than, you know, my friend's wife. Uh, th trust me when I say that there are mentalities out there uh, where people compare wives um, or my wife is more beautiful than his or, or whatever. Um, so uh, so uh, these are some of the mentalities. Now, uh, a lot of people say that, you know what, religion and piety does not cut it for me. I have to look for someone beautiful. And that's, that's your right. That's a decision that you have to make. And as Fahima said, it goes back to your uh, individual and your personality and the choices that you make. If you choose wrong, then you got to you know, take the consequences in. And if you choose right, um, then, you're, you're, then you're living a happy life. Uh, and honestly, families uh, play a very crucial role into this. Uh, when selecting a husband, uh, a lot of times the family's influence is, uh, you know, is infringed on the children, is enforced on the children um, to select the spouse the parents want. Uh, and sometimes the children are the victims of this. Not all the times. You know, arranged marriages sometimes can be more successful than a, than a marriage that a person chooses to, to, to have. Uh, but sometimes the selection isn't that great uh, because all of them do fall into the same category, arranged marriage and, and, and selecting or uh, what qualities to look for in a spouse. These things tend to always either um, affect you in a way, um, either negatively or positively. Now we did get uh, a few points, uh, a few messages and a few voice notes saying that personality, piety uh, and all that but we, when we go back to look at the Prophet and what he said, he says, when one intends to marry a woman, he should ask about her hair. Yeah, am I reading this right? Yeah, he should ask about her hair, just as he asks about her face, beauty, since the hair is one of the two beauties of a woman. Now, this is so nice. Like, I, I, I like this. You know, he's giving you advice. A lot of people have this idea, oh, wow, uh, you know, when, when, when I'm trying to get married, uh, I can't ask about the girl's qualities and stuff. Absolutely not. Depending on who you follow and, and the narrations, you can look at the person you want to get married to in certain ways um, that aren't prohibited. So the Prophet is telling us, when one intends to marry a woman, he should ask about her hair, just as he asks about her face, meaning face means beauty, uh, since the hair is one of the two beauties that a woman has or sustains. Um, so honestly, right there, the Prophet is telling you, yes, go for beauty. But at the same time, uh, he, tells, he tells us um, that a man who marries a woman for the sake of her wealth, Allah leaves him in his own condition. And one who marries her only for her beauty, will find in her things which he dislikes, unpleasing manners, in parenthesis, and Allah will gather up all these things for one who marries her for the sake of her faith, religiousness. So basically what Prophet Muhammad is saying, and the, f the first quote that I said, a person who marries someone should look at her hair, or should, you know, sh should get to know about her hair, because her hair is one of the two beauties. Face and hair, beauty. The Prophet also says, if a man marries someone uh, or a woman because of her wealth or because of her beauty, these two will vanish. But if he marries someone because of her faith, then 
all of these will gather together in that wife. And yes, a lot of people, and I, and, and, and I understand that, a lot of people will disagree with that. You know, if, if I marry someone not beautiful and I, 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 and I don't believe in something um, that's not beautiful, um, I believe everyone in, their, in, 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 in the eyes of themselves or in the eyes of the people they love is beautiful. Uh, but we do have another call. Ahmed is Brother Ali from London again. Sorry we cut off. Uh, yes, uh, but the point Ali's I was back. trying to make is something we overlook is looking at the potential spouse's parents when choosing a spouse. Mm -hmm. Because you'd get to understand how the household is built and whether it's on the foundations of Ahlul Bayt mm -hmm. and whether they'd fit with your family and how he or she would raise your children depending who your spouse is. Um, so one thing I find really important when looking for a spouse is um, looking looking at the spouse's parents. Mm -hmm. So looking at the spouse's parents in what way? Hello? Yeah, I think he's at the soccer game or something. But yeah, Sorry, I mean... Sorry, bro, I'm struggling to hear you. Uh, yeah, no, no, it's, it's okay. I mean, I was saying, um, in what way is he or she going to look at the spouse's parents? Pardon? Yeah, I don't know if he can hear me, uh, but yeah, I, th I, th I think he's in a in the soccer. Okay, game. Habibi, thank you, thank you for letting me on air. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Ali, brother Ali from London. Thank you very much. Um, but uh, one of the points that he mentioned, um, I don't know if he could hear me or not. Uh, I believe he was in a soccer game or something, uh, football game in the UK, if you want to call it that. Uh, uh, but he was mentioning something about looking at uh, the spouse's parents and of course the spouse has a huge influence the parents have a, have a huge influence on the spouse that you're looking for but we do have a message uh, a whatsapp message coming up the best qualities uh, in selecting so Jenna from Bahrain says the best qualities in selecting a spouse number one is to have a good a good heart and have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is close to the Ahlul Bayt and for sure everything will follow um, yes thank you very much Jenna from Bahrain uh, thank you very much for that uh, for that comment and, and for that message because a lot of people uh, sometimes might have the wrong idea might have the wrong view uh, of uh, what to select uh, of their uh, or, or what qualities to have when looking uh, for a spouse um, now honestly all of these qualities are just icing on the cake. You know, if you were to look deep down to, into it, um, one of the things that uh, really astonishes me uh, is the fact uh, that a lot of people don't actually look at the core of the person, but yet look at the outside. And honestly, when I say outside, and I've seen uh, girls in university, in, 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 in high school, on the street, you know, uh, when you're living in Canada, that's, that's just nothing. But when you see a girl with a ton of makeup on, and honestly now, uh, on the night of your marriage, uh, you know, you, you, you're looking at someone so beautiful, uh, and sometimes girls, yes, I, I, I do uh, apologize if, if, if I hurt your feelings, but sometimes uh, girls do deceive guys uh, with the looks. As I mentioned earlier, everyone's beautiful. There's no girl that's, you know, uh, I don't want to say the word ugly, but there's, there's no girl that's ugly. Um, but we do have Sahar from Afghanistan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Yeah. Hello. Um, so, yes, yeah, sorry. The question for tonight is what qualities to look for in a spouse? Can you repeat the question? Uh, what qualities to look for in a spouse? I hear you, sorry. Okay, um, so the, the, the question is, if you're watching us uh, on TV or on Facebook, the question is, what qualities to look for in a spouse? Let us know what you think. Okay. Well, I think the qualities we should look for as well is first he should have or she should have a strong faith. Mm -hmm. uh, they should put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
everything. Because once you have that, then I'm alone. Sorry? And also a, lo a good personality. Uh, you should, once you have, uh, so good personality and good faith, okay. Okay, can, can you elaborate on, on, on that? I mean, in, when, when you have, when a person maybe has faith, uh, have faith, have personality, have beauty, uh, is that okay or is that uh, a no-no? Sorry, I can't hear you. Okay, so uh, th there's a connection problem. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your, um, your call. Uh, th that word. Uh, uh, so basically, uh, she says that if a person has a strong faith and a strong personality, then don't hold back from going up to that person. Right now, uh, there, there's a huge guard uh, that girls put up, that guys put up. Uh, when uh, a guy comes to a girl, there's a huge guard um, to, you know, put your guards down. If you see a, 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 a brother, you know, uh, someone that's coming up to you, you know, he has the courage to come up to you and talk to you. Why you got to put that guard up? Uh, and and uh, th there's th and, and, and there's a huge argument uh, when it comes to spouse selection, a huge phenomena um, that I just came to my mind, and that's the phenomena that a Sayyidah cannot marry uh, a non Sayyid or a Sayyid cannot marry a non Sayyidah. Uh, now this phenomena really shocks me because honestly, when you're looking for someone to marry, uh, at the end of the day, it, d it, it doesn't depend on her. Um, her ancestors, because honestly, you, you, you never know who's 100% Sayyid and who's not. And this is just something that, I'm sorry to say this, but this is retarded. You can't just say no to, to, to a believer because he's a non-Sayyid. Uh, and, you know, keep, uh, and, and I know, and I know um, that there are girls out there um, who have passed the age of 30 and they haven't been married yet because their parents won't let them because the person who's proposing to them is a non sayyid Now, at the end of the day, every quality that you look for is just icing on the cake. You need to look at the core of the person and that core has to be fruitful for the icing to look beautiful. Because when you have beautiful icing and something bad on the inside, that won't work out good. Just look at it from the cake. Look at it from like this donut right here. The icing is beautiful. And the core is beautiful too. When you look at it like that, go get her. Go get her. 100%. Go get that woman that you like. Take it easy.